In this video, I'm going to show you two things. Now, one is Excel's weekday function, and two is how you can use pivot charts and pivot slicers to add interactivity to your reports so that you can quickly analyze large data sets by weekday. So for example, you want to see if there is a specific pattern on Tuesdays as compared to Thursdays. Now, optimally, your chart should also be super easy to update. So let's take a look at an example. Here I have a set of dates and closing price of a specific stock. These dates go through a few months. Now, what I want to do is find the weekday that corresponds to this date. And ultimately, I want to create a report, I want to create a chart that shows the weekdays and the average closing price for that weekday. So I want to be flexible that I can either look through the entire data set or I can select specific months and take a look at the average price by weekday. So the first thing I need to do is to bring weekday here, and that uses a very simple function called the weekday function. So what you need is the serial number, so that's basically your date. Then you need a return type, and that basically specifies how, you, how your week starts. It starts on a Sunday or a Monday. Now the default of Excel is that it starts on a Sunday, but let's say logically you say, okay, well, the week starts on Monday, I'm gonna pick two as the argument. So let's see what we get. We get two back. Now what does that mean? I've put the 2016 calendar here so we can cross check. This is the 9th of February. The 9th of February is a Tuesday. We got two back because we said our weekday starts from Monday, so that's a one and that's a two. If I change this to one, saying that the weekday starts from a Sunday, I get a three. What I don't want here though is numbers because I want to make a chart and on the x-axis, I want to show the weekday name. To change this number to the weekday name, I can use Excel's custom formatting. So I just press Control one to go to the custom formatting view. And here I can type in the abbreviation for day, which is D. If I type it once, I have the number, two times I get the zero two. Now I get the text. And if I press it four times, I have the full weekday name. So Excel figures that out because behind this, there is a date. Now let's see if this name is correct. Was that a Monday? The ninth. No, the ninth is actually a Tuesday. So this is something you need to watch out for, that if you're going to use custom formatting to show the weekday name, you need to go with Excel's default, which is a one, or you just leave it out. Otherwise you get the wrong name. So Tuesday is right. Now let's push this down and randomly check some other one. Let's check this one. So the 10th of March, it should be a Thursday, and that's a Thursday. Okay, so let's move this out of the way. Let's now create a pivot chart based on this weekdays. To have a pivot chart, we need a pivot table. To feed our pivot table, we're gonna use this data set, but best is to transform this data set into an official Excel table by pressing Control T. Now, the reason you would want to change this to an Excel table is that your source data for your pivot table is going to include any new data that you add to the bottom of this table once you refresh that pivot table. If you don't do this, you have to manually go and expand that source data. So I turned that into a table. The first thing I'm going to do is to go to design and clear this default layout it gives me to go back to my own. Let's give this table a name. I'm going to call it prices. Now I have the option to summarize with pivot table. That's my table. I want to put it here and let's just put it somewhere close. We'll put it on E1. Now, what do I choose here? Well, I want to have weekday on the bottom on the X axis and closing price on the Y. I'm just going to tick mark this and Excel generally figures it out correctly most of the cases where it should go. 
So that's in the rows, that's in the columns, but I don't want sum of closings. I'm going to go to value field settings and change that to average. And while I'm here, I don't want to see all these mixed up decimal places there. So I'm going to go to number format, number, and just keep this at two decimal places. Okay, so now based on this, I'm going to create a pivot chart. So just go here, click on pivot chart. I'm fine with the column. The first thing I'm going to do is go remove the elements that I don't need. So all of these, right mouse click, add data labels to this. And let's give it a name. And let's take these away, these buttons by going to Analyze and clicking on this to toggle them off. Okay, so I have a chart. It's not interactive. I need to have a slicer. So I can go in and insert a slicer because I want my slicer by month, but let's see what options I have. I only have date here. So let's click that, see what we get. But I get every single day that's in here, and that's not really going to make sense. I want to group these by month. So what I need to do is to bring the month option in my pivot table. So let me just remove that slicer. Let's go back to the pivot table. To get that, I can click on date and you can see what it did. It automatically added months and date here. So it added a grouping for me here. Now I don't want to have this stuff in my pivot chart. So I can remove this date, just kick them out and kick that one out, but I still have the month option available here, which means I can use it in my slicer. Now, if you're using an older version of Excel and it doesn't do this for you, you need to go to your pivot table and click on those dates and group them by month. So now all I need to do is to bring in a slicer for months. Now, it doesn't matter if you bring in your slicer from the pivot table option or from the chart tool options, because that controls both views. It controls this, and ultimately this is controlled by this. So I'm going to insert a slicer, and now that I have the months option, I'm going to click that, and I get the months. Okay, so if I click on a specific month, I get the average prices by weekday for that month. I can hold down control and click on different months. I can click this or I can use this and pick or deselect what I don't want. Okay, now these grayed out ones are months that I don't have data in. So if I don't want to see them at all, I can control that under slicer tools option, under slicer settings. And I can say hide items with no data. So that's going to hide these ones. Now the other thing is I do want to see the header because I want to see, I want to be able to use this filtering, but I don't want that caption. So I'm just going to delete that as well. Okay, so it's starting to look good. Let's just make some cosmetic changes to this so that they fit better in the report. But one thing I'm going to do is reduce the gap width of my chart to 100 just to get them closer. Then let's go with a darker color. And well, let's say that in my report, I have, let's bring these down here so that you can see better. I have a light background color. I can take away the shape fill from my chart so that it sits better on my report. And that border is definitely not needed here. So let's take that away. And here for the slicer, you have different options. You can decide if you want them in this format. So more horizontally, you just have to reduce this or if you want them set up like this. So that really depends on how you're planning to set up your report. Now I want this slicer to also fit better in this report. So I'm going to go and format this. Just click on it. You see the slicer styles. First step is pick one that is closest to the style that you want. So I'll go with this one. 
But the changes I would want to make to this is one is take away the border and another is to give it the same background color as this gray here. To do that, we have to duplicate one of these given ones. I'm going to use this one and give it a name. Just call it Price Slicer. Now for the whole slicer, I'm going to format that. Under border, I don't want any border. And for fill, I want that gray here. Now when you do that, it doesn't take it because it's still on the old one. So you, you'll see yours in the custom. You have to go and select it and now it looks much better. It's looking good. Now as our last test, let's go and add new data set to this. We ended in August. Let's add some data for September. Just gonna find and replace the month here. Just for the purpose of testing, let's see if September pops up here. So I do have to go and refresh this. The data for September is now here. So we click on it and we can see it here. So that's how you can use Excel's weekday function to get the name of the week out. And that's how you can also use pivot charts and pivot slicers to do interactive analysis on your data sets. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you like these type of videos, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you can get notifications when new videos like this one come out.